Pastor Mark. Uh, it's good to be back. It's been a while po mga kapatid na hindi kami nakabalik dito. Salamat last 2019 sa so first benefit uh, where we're here. And it's good to see some brethren na nakabalik din. And the first time I came to this church, I think that is that was 2013. It was 2013. That's the start of our fellowship with Brother Pastor Mark and his family and this church. By God's grace, up to now, we continue and we're blessed to be here once again. Thank you for inviting us, Pastor. And it's a great honor, a privilege na ibinigay ng Panginoon to us uh, to minister to you the Word of God. And thank you, Pastor Jeter and also sa mga kapatiran and brethren na nandito po sa atin ngayon. And also, good to see some pastors na ngayon lang din natin nakita. Some of them, we are familiar sa online virtual friends. We call it. Now, we are real friends. <laughs> uh, in spirit. Wala. Before, before there was that term virtual, the Bible used in spirit. Amen. So now... Uh, face to face and thank God for that and also sa mga uh, pastors na maka fellowship at makilala pa namin even more okay I hope to uh, uh, minister to you this morning and I, I thank God for that introduction that was really meant for the introduction because the whole day is meant for for the final authority and uh, we when we say our final authority we mean the King James Bible and why it is our final authority and uh, thank you Pastor Josiah and that's really really helping us uh, to move on from many other introductions so it's good to have that introduction and uh, at, that prepares us for this morning's message and teaching and some of you are maybe familiar with what I'm going to teach this morning because uh, I, I, I taught this one the first time when we were here, last yung first benefit, but I haven't uh, finished the the, the 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 topic, the studies. And besides, Pastor Mark told me that there are uh, first time, there are first time, first timers, and um, so we will uh, talk about that once again. So we'll be talking on the threefold chord of the scriptures, and I'd like to ask everyone to stand, please, uh, so that we could. Uh, ask God for wisdom and let's uh, pray. Let's pray. And uh, before that, let's look at let's look at First John chapter number five. First John chapter number five. I'd like you to go in First John five verse number seven. And uh, and we are familiar to that verse, and that verse is really this uh, controversial. Amen in the Christendom because of the modern version they have omitted this but praise God we have it in our King James Bible and just like what was discussed this morning amen we could say that our teaching and belief on the Trinity is in the Bible amen it's in our Bible amen so the Bible says let's read all together for there are three that bear records in heaven the Father the Word and the Holy Ghost and these three are one but our verse, main verse, is verse 8. And there are three that bear witness in earth, the spirit, the water, and the blood, and these three agree in one. So there is a witness in heaven. There is a witness on earth. Praise God. We have that absolute standard, Pastor Josiah. Amen. We have a witness of what is true, what is right, what is holy, what is godly, what is righteousness on earth. God did not leave us comfortless or God did not leave, his, leave it to ourselves to guess and to search but God provided a witness on earth amen and this is the spirit the water and the blood now our duty this morning is to connect this to the precious doctrine of the inspiration preservation and translation of the scripture Okay, we will link, we will look at some association how the spirit is connected with inspiration, water is connected with preservation, and the blood is connected with translation. And that makes the threefold chord 
of the scripture. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, bless us now. Once again, bless your people. And this we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me take your seat. Thank you very much. So we'll be dealing on inspiration, preservation, and translation. That is really the pillars of our authority. Without this, we cannot have one. Without this, we cannot have a perfect Bible. Without this, we cannot have an objective source of our authority. Amen. Or else we will run through dreams and signs and wonders. But thank God, amen, because God inspired a book and God preserved the book and God translated the book in a language where we can read and understand, amen, and study and believe unto. So we thank God for that. And, and the issue of this is, this is, since this is the pillar, this is the very foundation of our authority, that's why we have assurance, we have certainty that we have the right book, amen, we have the right authority, it's because of this. So rightfully so, this is under attack of the devil. This is the most criticized, this is the most uh, questioned, ito pong, ito pong doktrina po na ito. There used to be a time that uh, the battle over the scripture was over, uh, the in, in, over the interpretation of the Bible because there was no issue of other authority because back then, knowing after the Reformation, let's just say 1600, 1700, 1800, there was only one, amen, Bible for the English-speaking people. So their debate is about the interpretation and the understanding. There was no question about whether this inspired or not, whether this is preserved or not, or whether this is the right translation. There was no issue about that back then. They just fight over the interpretation, but now, amen, the question now is no longer the interpretation, but it's now over inspiration, amen, preservation, and translation, whether we have the perfect Bible or don't have the perfect Bible. That is the issue now. There used to be a time that the battle over the scripture is what the Bible says, is over what the Bible says. Now, the battle in our present times is what the Bible is. Amen. So for almost 300 years, there's only one Bible. That's why sabi ni Brother Josiah Kadina, Pastor Josiah, that uh, when you go to the bookstore, there used to be a time in, 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 that, in those days, in 1800, early 1800, 1700, when you go to the bookstore, when you say, I want to buy that old black book, and you have 100% guarantee that they'll give you the King James Bible. Right now, when you go to, to National Bookstore, since there is in English alone, in English translation, there are more than 200 translations in English alone. 200 variations. So at least when you go there in the bookstore, you will have at least 0.5% chance to get the King James Bible if it's available. Amen. Kaya tinatago na lang sa sulok, wag yan archaic, outdated. And they'll say that. So this one, so they will just... Uh, tell you this is uh, the best selling amen but they they lie about that the best selling book of all time it's not just the bible the best selling book of all time is the king james bible i, I mean all time it's not just new york times bestseller amen so the niv is just the new york times bestseller but the King James is of all time because this is a 400-year-old book. Praise, praise the Lord. So this is the most attacked po, mga kapatid. So we'll deal on that. And there is really, I, I'll say this, the devil is really successful even among the circle of Bible-believing preachers and churches of attacking the concept of these three. And by failing really to properly understand the intended... Uh, uh, meaning and truth behind this doctrine is really resorting to doubts or maybe or maybe 
Uh, without a doubt, I cannot question many of our good Bible-believing friends. They believe that the Bible is the Word of God, but they have a hard time in defending it. They have a hard time explaining to the people because these doctors and these scholars had been successful in destroying the right concept and the principles behind it. Now, we'll see. This lesson is really teaching us that the devil... Uh, I mean that the devil has been behind this confusion, but this is also showing you that there is simplicity still in this doctrine. This is not a complicated, deep, deep doctrine, but this is really simple. And this is not also a deep teaching. This is very basic. That's why this is the foundation. So we will go on to some details of the scriptures as we go on in this topic. But I'm telling you, this is basic, okay? Now, uh, I, I will jump to this po mga kabatid, uh, some important considerations. Thank you for the introduction. I don't have to deal with this. God exists. God has magnified His Word above His own name. You, you've got to understand that first, that God's Word is eternally settled in heaven, that God has communicated His Word to mankind, that God's Word were written so that they could be made eternally available to men, God said that God preserved His Word. Mga kapatid, promised to preserve His Word. And God's Word is in harmony with His nature and character. It, it was dealt with earlier. And the Bible is the final authority in all matters, not just faith and practice, but in all matters. Okay? As Bible believers, amen, in, you cannot say, no, the Bible is not applicable in this area. No. It is in all matters. Young men, young ladies, in, in all matters. Even in your relationships. In everything. Fathers, mothers, in all matters. Okay? And the Bible is a spiritual book. You've got to understand that, that that's not an ordinary book. Amen. You know, you know what makes this book different than all other books? This is the only book that we can consider spiritual because this book is alive. This book has a spirit of God in it. Okay? So that separates the Bible from all, all other else. And only the spiritual can be able to discern or understand or study. So you've got to have also the same spirit with this book. Amen. You've got to have the Spirit of God because this book has the Spirit of God. The reader, the student must have also the Spirit of God because when the, the, the method of the Word of God or the method of the Holy Spirit in teaching is in 1 Corinthians chapter number 2, as we know, it is comparing spiritual things with spiritual. So if it's comparing spiritual things with carnal, there could be no teaching. There could be no understanding. It must be spiritual with is spiritual then there is a link there is a flow so you've got this book is spiritual the reader should also be spiritual so that when we say spiritual we're not saying super faithful we're not saying super holy we're simply saying in first corinthians 2 anybody who has the spirit of god can be considered spiritual okay in the word of god so you, you you've got to have that you have to understand that because some people would say, I don't want to use the King James Bible because the King James Bible is hard to understand. They, they'll, they'll simply say that. And uh, my always, my classic uh, answer to that, no, it is not hard to understand. It is impossible to understand. I'll say that. It's not hard. Do you think this is just an, a very easy book to anybody? Do, do you just think that doctors and, and uh, professionals without the Spirit of God could just understand this? Only them can understand this. We as not as educated as them. We are not capable because you, you just categorize this as hard to understand. No, it is impossible to understand because the real gap is between heaven and earth. That's the real gap. There is even the finest mind could not fathom or penetrate to the, to the depth of this book. You got to have the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit will teach you all things, yea, even the deep things of God. And it is not by the, the capacity of men, but it is by the Spirit of God. So it is impossible to understand unless, unless God's criteria of understanding this book is met. Without meeting the criteria, 
There is no understanding. You cannot say, it's hard to understand. It's hard to understand. No. The issue is not the translation. The issue is not because this is the old book or old language as, as they say. The issue is not because this is outdated and they use archaic words. The real issue is because that man don't have the Spirit of God. That's this, the thing. Amen. But if you have the Spirit of God, even farmers, even uneducated, and we know that by testimony, we know that as we preach this for a long time in our churches, not all of them are professionals, not all of them are educated, and yet they love the book, and yet they enjoy the book. Amen. Bakit? Bakit? Because they have the Spirit of God. That's just the thing. Amen. And we've got to understand this thing that Satan desires worship. Our opening text earlier, God is not the author of confusion. Right. He's not the author of confusion. So, what happened then? Po mga kapatid. Satan desires worship. Amen. That's why there's confusion. And the only book or the only thing in this world, amen, that stand against, okay, or that will prevent, prevent Satan of his goal and aim is this book. As long as there is absolute truth, as long as there is that perfect Bible that will always be a threat to Satan's ultimate goal. Hello. He desires worship. One of his desires, and I will, I will be like the Most High God. Not only he wanted that title to become the possessor of heaven and earth, but he wanted really to be worshipped. And that has been his desire. And the same offer that he had with Adam and Eve, ye shall be like gods, knowing good and evil, because Satan have declared equality with God. That is the sin of Satan. He declared equality with God. He think he is so wise. He think he is full of wisdom. He think he is full of beauty and he's perfect. And his heart puffs him up in a carnal mind, a vain, okay, thoughts. And he, he thought that he could be equal with God. No, he cannot. So that's why there is warfare. That's why there is conflict. That's why there is confusion in the world. And the most controversial and the most attack na na element and witness in this book is the word of God. And that's why we have this issue now. And the inspiration is one of that. Ang pinakauna na inatak is the inspiration. Why it's the inspiration? Because inspiration validates that the scripture is the word of God. Amen. Without inspiration, this is just a mere words of men. That's why it is just natural that the devil will sow confusion with regards to this term. And it will sow confusion with regards to the term. And without proper understanding to this would lead us to many things. Just like, just like our first preacher have laid earlier po mga kapatid. Now, why we've got to make this as an issue? Because the devil make this an issue. And number two, and I, we find out for, for many years in teaching the Bible, in going anywhere by the grace of God, we found out that this is one of the fundamental problems even among Bible believers and even, even among right dividers. And we find, they find this helpful, and I, I, I hope and I pray that this could also help us. I'll make this fast, mga uh, kapatid, okay? Now, uh, some school of thoughts regarding to our subject matter, inspiration of the scripture is the first chord. Number one, ano yung mga school of thoughts? Ano pa? Number one, the Bible is uninspired. Of course, wala naman siguro dito niyan. Are you? Wala. Right. Number two, some people believe that all Bibles are the same. Meron pa ba dito? If there is somebody here na sabi mo, ah, pares-parehas lang lahat ng Bible, okay, you better think again, okay? And consider our lesson this morning. Now, we have documents, we have, we have some, ano po mga kapatid, uh, yung mga works ng mga maraming mga Bible believer by yung comparative studies, you could search out, even you could Google it out, and you could 
see at least more, there are more than 10,000 differences. And they are not the same. Even if there is one uh, difference, it cannot make them the same. I, the old preacher says, ano sabi nila? Things that are different are not the same. But there are at least thousands, ten thousands of differences. With the King James with modern version. And most especially with the Lord Jesus Christ. I'll just give you a little of that. This is how, how this is this is the name of Jesus Christ, Lord God, and his other names were missing. And these were omitted in the most popular version, the New American Standard Version and the New International Version. Okay? Could you just just in itself? This is just in, in the person of Christ and God. That's how innumerable these things. Okay? And you cannot say they're the same. No, they're not. Amen. They're not. That's why we mean this. We teach this. We preach this. Because they're not the same. Amen. We expose their errors because they're not the same. We're explaining to people because they're not the same. Amen. The third group is only the original autographs are inspired and perfect. It was elaborated earlier. Oh, no. The... Only the original is inspired and, 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 and perfect because only the original autograph because only the original had been God-breathed. Right. Have you heard that? When you believe the King James Bible to be inspired, you will say, and they will tell you, oh, you mean to tell me God breathed it also? Because the meaning of the word inspiration means God breathed? So, then some good teachers of the Bible will just defend this book with sincerity and honesty, but they, some of them lack information. They will just go directly and say, no, God can re-inspire the book. So as if there was inspired book, then there was no inspiration, then there was the second inspiration. There are, yeah, I know many, many faithful men. Without a doubt, they, they really defend the King James Bible. They're not Bible correctors. But this is how they, we, we use that word, um, revile. This is how they revile us. The Bible critics revile us because of that term of double inspiration. The second inspiration. That means the only word of God in the world is the original and the King James Bible. What about before the King James Bible? That was the question. Because of that uh, argument of the God-breathed thing, then many of our faithful brethren and co-laborers and fellow helpers in defending this book, amen, could not, amen, answer rightly with that argument. I know I, I've watched a YouTube uh, video back then. I think that was, I, I showed that to our Bible students when I teach about this. I showed them the difficulty when these Bible scholars, quote unquote, will question them that uh, about this, where was the King James Bible? Uh, where was the Bible or the Word of God before 1611? Because if you believe on re-inspiration, double inspiration, and you know that he is a great author, he'd been a good help to me as I study the King James Bible. And I, as I listen in this view right now to his answer, and that's where the problem lies. Okay? So we'll deal on that by, by the grace of God. Okay? That's where, that's where these uh, scholars and... Okay, anyway. Number, uh, ito, this, under today's, the Bible is preserved but not inspired. They'll say. Yeah, that, that is a debate in America right now. There... It, historically, 16, 17, 18, in 1600, 17, 1800, even early 1900, that was not the issue. They'll say they're just one and the same. They, when, in, if the Bible is inspired, then it is preserved. If it's a Bible is preserved because it is inspired. Now, this group will say, oh, only the original is inspired. The King James Bible is just preserved. Now, we will also learn later on how fatal it is not to believe the King James Bible to be the inspired Word of God. Okay? How damaging 
if you don't believe that this is just preserved and not inspired. Amen. It is, it is a joke when you say this is just preserved but not inspired. It cannot stand. Again, what validates this to be the word of God that coming from the mouth of God is the inspiration. Amen. As if you are simply saying that that's not really the preserved, uh, uh, the inspired word of God. Next. Some people would say translations of the Bible cannot be inspired. These are the TR people. They say that the Greek is inspired, that the Hebrew is inspired, but not the English. The English cannot be inspired. Okay. Another group is there is no inspired perfect Bible available today. So if that is your position right now, as what I have told you, I hope this lesson will help you. Okay? That's the intention. Amen. And number four, the Bible is inspired because their leader says it is. And don't worry, that is right. That's what happened to America. The fundamentalists, I'm not talking about the fundamental Baptists, but I'm talking about the fundamentalist movement in America right after they went out from the Southern Baptist Convention, if you know the, these big names, John R. Rice, Lee Robertson, and Jack Hiles, in the 1950s, when they went out from the convention, amen, they started the fundamentalist movement in the America, that church growth movement, that bus riding, bus, you know, ministry movement in America. They started that. And you know, when Jack Hiles was, con they were not, they were endorsing the revised version from the beginning. John R. Rice was an endorser of the revised version. They said this is a better version than the King James. Hello? They said this is a better version. Okay, may pinamimigay dyan, it's okay. Informal lang tayo, ha? You can eat, you can drink, you can have your coffee, but don't fail to listen. Okay. Amen. Amen. You could stretch. You could jump. You could dance. Sit to it. Uh, <laughs> you'll do it right. <laughs> I, we'll, we'll give time though. So since this is more of a historical thing, it's okay. In 1984, even during, during the, in the Hiles Anderson College, this is a historical move, uh, fact, so. Huh? He, one of their leaders, Jack Hiles, got converted on the King James Bible as he read on the why the King James Bible to be the Word of God. That little booklet written by, written by Peter Rockman. But um, he didn't tell his people about that because he'll be controversial if he said, "Oh, I got converted under the ministry of Rockman during those days." Uh, uh, you know, then it was Bill Grady that I learned this thing. From Dr. Grady that I learned this, the history of this. When I learned his preaching with regards to uh, a shibuleth. Okay. And hindi sibuleth. Huh? Kay Pastor Anton yung sibuleth. But he's preaching on shibuleth. I, I, by the way, that's a very good preaching. That's, I've heard that, I think, uh, 15 years ago. And that's a good, good preaching. The seven pseudo King James onlyism. Yan yung subtitle din niya. And uh, he got converted. Then after that, and he said, Oh, this book is inspired, preserved. And you know, he's an influential folks. And everybody says, Oh, the King James Bible is the Word of God. The King James Bible is inspired Word of God. Yeah, you know, the, the hellfire preachers and Hellfire brimstone preachers are, are throwing this book and waving this book and say, this is the word of God. And he, he, I listened one time to the preaching of Jackal. He said, uh, keep your stinking feet out of my drinking water. Oh, it's about the King James Bible. And they're very fiery about that. He died in 2002. Then his son-in-law, Okay, replaced him, you know, Jack Scapp. At first, ooh, he was waving the King James Bible. Then right there at 2011, the 400 years anniversary of our King James Bible, he 
they have this KJV Summit move, uh, uh, conference, then he declared that the King James is not inspired. And it is not even close to the perfect preserved word of God. He says that it has errors on it. Hello? Then you know what happened to America? The fundamentalist movement in America, they were divided. One group says, oh, it is just preserved. The other group, no, it is preserved and inspired. You know why that happened? You know why that happened? It is because they just follow what their leader says rather than studying really the subject matter. Pag sunod-sunuran lang tayo, pag mag-change yung position, then you will change as well. It is not really a conviction. It is not really a personal discovery. Amen. They just, they just uh, uh, going through the, 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 the trendings. Amen. Yung uso-uso lang. Parang expression. I, I, I've heard many times in, in big churches, oh, this is the word of God. This is inspired, preserved. It's pure. That when they go to their seminary, no class, this is a mistranslation. It should be translated this way. The, the King James is wrong in this. Then, then the Greek is right on this. And they'll say that over and over. They lie before your face. Amen. So what is that? Sana, sana, tayong mga pastors especially, as we teach our people about this, is we should make this also, uh, we should emphasize this thing also, that they, they should not just believe the book because their pastor believe it. But I hope you should have a personal study, personal discovery, personal conviction with that. But one year later, in that 2011 summit, one year later, Jack Scott was in jail. <laughs> the old man in Florida said, if you mess the book, God will mess you up. Now, I don't know if that's just a circumstantial thing, but somewhere in his life, he messed up the book. Amen. So God amen, make his mouth stop. And he's now in jail. I hope he's preaching the gospel there. Anyway, but as far as this teacher by the grace of God is concerned, the Bible is inspired and preserved perfectly in the King James Bible. And that is our position. So I said that to you so that you will know my position. Okay? And that is a declaration. Okay? Now, Let's go to the biblical usage of inspiration then. Okay, yun po yung school of thoughts. And since we are discussing inspiration, the biblical usage or how many times the word inspiration was used in the Bible is just two times. The first time it was used, the word inspiration is in Job 32.8. But there is a spirit in man and the inspiration of the Almighty giveth them understanding. So that's the first mention. The second and the last mention is 2 Timothy 3.16. As we know, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So twice. So in other words, this is not just a theological term. We, this is a Bible term. And this is a King James term. The modern version except, oh no, the modern version maybe except the King James uh, New King James, they use God breathe instead of inspiration. Hello? The King James used that word. So this is a King James Bible term. This is not just a theological term. So when we study inspiration of the Word of God, it is really coming from the Bible, not an invented term. Okay. I hope that's clear. So twice. And observe Observe the usage. Let's look at the parallelism. By the way, the, here, this is the, in Job 32 verse 8, it is very, it is very wonderful, I mean, very, very beautiful how the Lord put these two mentions of the word, the term inspiration, because you could view here the two kinds of inspiration in Job 32 verse 8 that tells you the inspiration of man. 
And you know what is the inspiration of man? There is the spirit in man. That is the spirit in. That is the inside sa tao. Inspiration in man. And the second is the inspiration of the scripture. When we say, get the principle of the inspiration, okay, in man or of man is, is having the Spirit of God. That's what makes man inspired. If you will have the Spirit of God in you, you'll be inspired. Amen. Now, here, the second one is the inspiration of the Scripture, not the inspiration of man. So there, that's a big different thing. And we're talking of the inspiration of the Scripture, not inspiration of man. So that is to say, in the same principle, when we talk about in a nutshell, inspiration is when we say this is inspired word of God, we mean that there is the spirit of God in it. Okay? Do you get what I... Yung gusto kong ipunto? Sige, I'll elaborate as we go on later on. Let's get the parallelism to these things. Job 32 verse 8 and 2 Timothy 3.16 In dito sa Job, it mentioned the word inspiration and sa 2 Timothy 3.16 it mentioned Inspiration. So there is a parallel. Right. Now, in Job 32.8, inspiration of the Almighty. Then 2 Timothy 3.16, inspiration of God. There is a parallel. Right. Next, in Job 32.8, it says, inspiration of the Almighty giveth in the present tense. Also, in 2 Timothy, is given, is also in a pre present continuous. Form, continue, form, okay? They're all in the present. But in second, uh, Job 32, 8, it says, it giveth understanding. In Second Timothy 3, 16, it give, is given to the Scripture. So the object of inspiration is the Scripture since the Scripture is passive, not active. So the active there is, I'll, I'll describe, or I'll, we'll talk about also that later on. So you have, you have that uh there is understanding and there is the scripture. When you put them together, therefore the word inspiration from our English text gives man two essential things. One, all scripture. The other one is understanding. So without inspiration, amen, you cannot understand the word of God. And without inspiration, there could be no word of God. Amen. That's the issue that we're trying to raise. Amen. Amen. So, that is how beautifully the Lord put that two verses together. Okay? Now, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's look at the definition of inspiration. Dito kasi nagkatalo. Here's what the, how's the problem. Now, we cannot question the loyalty, the awe, and the, the belief or the faith and the conviction of many of our faithful brethren and fellow helpers to the truth. In defending the King James Bible. Salute ako and I've learned many things. And this is not meant actually to lower them down. But this is to give give them credit. Okay? And to, to, uh, to praise God for their works and how they help us and how they influence us. But is, as an observant Bible student, this is what I really observe. That the real problem was not their conviction, but the actual problem why we have a hard time in persuading and defen defending the inspiration of the King James Bible, it's because of the meaning, okay, and the concept and the way we understand what inspiration is. That's where the problem lies. Okay, so you know why it's been a problem? Because many of our forefathers and even our faithful teachers and preachers that, that taught us or that we have read their works. and This is one of my observations is this, that they play, okay, in the home court of the enemies. Naglaro sila sa korte ng mga kaaway ng Biblia. How do I say that? We will discover later on. 
But ang point ko is ganito po mga kapatid. Gumamit po sila, kinuha po nila, hindi nila namalayan na yung meaning nila ng inspiration was taken from those who oppose the inspiration of the Word of God. Okay? So what was the meaning? The Word is God breathed. That is how we are. We are um, thought sa ating bibliology and they never realized, we never realized back then that it was really not coming from the Word of God and the interpretation of the Word of God. It is coming from one man. And the source of that man is he wrote a Greek lexicon and his name is James Strong. That is a Greek dictionary sa likod ng Strong's Concordant. There is a Greek and Hebrew lexicon. Do you remember that thick book? <laughs> Amen. At the back of the... There's no problem with the concordance. It has been helpful. But there was a lexicon. There's a lexicon at the back of that. Then if you look at, hunt down the word, uh, the word uh, inspiration or the word theopneustus, the word is theopneustus because it's a Greek-English lexicon. If you hunt on the word theopneustus, there equals God breathe. And from that time, seminary after seminary, seminary after seminary, that was handed down up to our faithful men and brethren. And that's where the difficulty comes from. So that's why, as we thought before, we believe that the King James Bible is a dictionary in itself. We believe that the King James Bible is a lexicon in itself. It can define terms. It can, you, you, before, by the way, Noah's Webster's 1828 was based on the King James Bible. Okay? It was not, de the King James is not dependent on that. But Noah have taken most of his definition, amen, from the King James Bible. Because it's a lexicon in itself. It's a dictionary in itself. Now, there are, Basic method also to know the meaning without going to the Greek, without going to the Hebrew. Because um, inspiration, the word inspiration is not really um, translated from the, 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 ano po, or the word, the, the, the origin of the word, origina, I'm talking of the origin of the word inspiration. Inspiration is not a Greek or or Hebrew term, but it's a Latin term. It is a transliteration. When, sige, I'll explain that later on. Let's go to the definition of inspiration. Let's look at this word, the etymology of, of ano po. This is, these are one of the linguistic tools that we learn. If you'd like to know a meaning, look at the etymology. When we say etymology, that's the origin of the word or the source of word whether English word, whether they'll tell you, oh, it comes from Latin, oh, it comes from Greek, or it's a Hebrew word, or it's a German word, or it's whatever. So, ibabalik ka niya sa ano po. But, but ang word na inspiration, this word inspiration over here, ay ang origin po niya ay Latin. Ibig sabihin, it's a transliteration from the Latin word, at ito po, inspiratio, that's for the Latin, then in English, inspiration. So, the English, just naglagay lang sila ng N. French also is inspiratio. Latin is inspiratio. Hello? Spanish is also inspiratio. And by the way, can I tell you something? 90% of our English language when it comes to etymology po mga kapatid is Latin in origin. That's why we could read Latin because Latin used Roman letters the same with English. And if you, if you study English language, if you study the family of language ng, ng English, it comes from the Gothic language. It comes from the Goth in the first century. They are the barbarians, the Scythians. They, they are the Goth, the Gothic. Then it moved on to the Anglo and the Saxons, the Anglo-Saxons. Then later on, it was developed. So it was a combination. That's why it's a beautiful language. So, but do you understand that Goth is... It's almost Latin. Gothic language is almost Latin. Kaya yung Gothic style, right? Remember? Ng writing? Okay. The, the, I'm just telling you that. But hindi po tayo 
Ang word lang ang dinidefine natin na we're not looking at the Latin Bible. <laughs> we're looking at the origin of just the word. So that's that's where you get the word inspiratio of the word inspiration in English. Example, in Latin, inspirare, that's where we get the English inspire. So it's more of a transliteration. And spiro, the word, kasi in, ito, spear, it is a spiro in Latin, which means actually breath in English. So that is a translation. Nakuha niyo po, kasi oh, magkalayo. Pag sinabi mong translation, magkaparehas lang. It transliterate. Okay? Ang translation is an equivalent word. But trans example, oh, the Greek word of the word baptism, which uh, means immersion, yun ang translation, immersion. Pero, oh, wala naman ang, wala namang baptism sa, ano, sa Bible, wala namang, dapat immersion ang pagka-translate. Dapat immersion ang inilalagay ng King James Bible doon. That's why they, they, they don't like the word baptism. It should be put immersion there, they said. The King James translator, no, we did not translate it. We transliterate it. So that's why nagkaroon ng word ng baptism. It's the same baptizo. Okay? Ito, it's really a translation. Spiro, breath. Magkalayo, right? Now, itong spirari, where we get the word breathe. Okay? And itong spiritus, of course, spirit, Itong respiratio. By the way, ano bang point mo, evangelist? Bakit ka nag-open, open ng ganyan? Okay lang, maintindihan nyo later on. Ito, respiration. That's where the word respiration or the act of breathing. So, we are familiar during the pandemic about respiratory system, right? <laughs> so, it's something to do with our uh, breathing. So, respiration. Then, when you say inspiro, you see that word in, in spiro, then you will get the word in breath or inhale. Nakonyo po? In spiro, in breath or inhale. Now, ang expiro is where we get the word breathe out. X, X means out. Amen. So breathe out or exhale. So, madali, you would like to learn. In ano po mga kapatid, sa medical, ano, simply inspiration. You may ask our nurses and doctors here, inspiration is inhale. So the focus of inspiration is the, the, the intake of the air. And breathe out, that is expiration. That means there, the, the life is out. The breath is out. So, the problem with God breathe thing is this is how they taught us before. The, the word inspiration means God breathe. That means when the writer have written the, all of the, the words of God, then God breathed it and it was alive. So, that's the thing. I'll explain as we go on later on. But in this area, you have already the idea what we're pointing, okay? And the focus of inspiration is the intake, inside, not out. Okay? It's the inside, not out. Okay? Next. Expir expiration or expiratio here, we, ha we have the word for expiration. Now, with that, with that po mga kapatid, so inspiration in the English is derived from Latin. It's transliterated from the Latin word inspiratio. So, that's the first thing. We will put them together as we go on. Let's go to another tool. Another tool is morphology. Una, itong etymology. You get the source kung anong word na inspiration. Siyan sa nanggagaling. It is Latin or origin. Let's look at the morphology. Is the next part po mga kabatid. The word formation. How words are formed. You know, the behavior of the words is dependent on how words are formed and combined. So, in morphology, there is what we call the basic word or the base word. And there is what we call the affixes. It is very obvious. That's why sabi ko sa inyo, these are, this is not deep, but this is basic. By the way, that's why we don't learn Greek, we don't learn Hebrew. We'll just learn English, basic English anyway. So, makikita po, if there is the basic word, 
then there is the affixes. Pag sinabi natin affixes, we have the prefix and the suffix. We have that in our in our in that language. The prefix is the word added before, right? And the the suffix is the word added after the word or sa dulo. In in sa Filipino language, we have on a panlapi. We call this the panlapi. We have the onlapi, we have the gitlapi, and we have the who lapi. Okay. Very rare in English to have a, a affixes in the middle. Very rare. But it is very common in the Filipino. We have the onlapi, gitlapi, panlapi. Ay, who lapi. Okay. Nakita po natin. So, with that, malalaman mo, for example, ang isang word ay very basic word. For example, ang basic word, faith. How do I know pag basic word yan? Faith. Kasi alam mo, wala nang combination. You know that there is no combined word. That's faith. You cannot remove one or is there any basic word from faith? Wala na. But how, how would morphology function when you when you add a word, a suffix, it would change its behavior depending on the meaning of the suffix of the word, uh, uh, the, the suffix word. For example, lagyan mo word na faith, then you add full, then it you have now faithful. Now it determines its meaning now. Amen. So it means now full of faith. But when you add a prefix an. It would change again. It depends on the suffixes. So the affixes, I mean the affixes, amen, determines the behavior of the base word. Unfaithful. Oh, you have now a morphology, but that's still one word. Unfaithful. Put them together. So it now goes, oh, not faithful. So by looking at that, you can now understand if you understand the meaning of the prefix un, it means not. So without Further, ano po mga kabatid, changing the word of I of the word, you can know by looking at the base word, then looking at the prefix, you can determine actually the meaning. English is really designed, listen, by the grace of God, no, ito po, that, that's why blessed tayo. Tayo mga Pilipino, that's why ang dali nating makarelate sa English. And anybody can learn English. You know why? Because English language is designed na even if you look at the word without even going to the dictionary if you are familiar of the morphology of the word you could somehow define the word itself at least closer to the the basic common definition at least by looking at that po mga kapatid that's what I'm saying po mga kapatid with this regard like for example some theological term some biblical term that we know po mga kapatid can define by morphology by looking at the word for example ito yung some examples din inano na natin isa yung word na regeneration that is a very long word right that is really a very long word oh re, ilang letters yan 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 12 letter word but how could you look at that? Just break it down. No? You see that word? No? Look at the base word. What is the base word of regeneration? It's the gene. And if you understand the base word, now you get it. If you understand the prefix, the, 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 the meaning of the suffix, then you can define regeneration on your own. Without going to the Greek or Hebrew and all of that. Because regeneration is, the word re means again, the Asian, every time you see the Asian, the Sean, or the I-O-N, they always mean the act of, the action of, the act of being. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, when you understand the word gene, where we get the word generation, where we get the word generate, gene means life, means... So, you see that, looking at that, you know, ah, regeneration is making someone alive again. Because of the word the act of making someone alive. Okay? It's a process. So, so, kung pupunta ka na sa dictionary, then they will add more term and some high faluting words like the process of and blah, 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 and all of that. But the basic canto definition is simply, oh, I, I, I know, I, I have the idea. It's about genealogy. It's about the life. 
The rates means again, the action is the action or the process of. So then I got the word. For example, the word atonement, break that down at one minute. Amen. So, you know, the root word of atonement, it's one. That's another word for reconciliation in the New Testament. When you are reconciled, you are made one. Amen. So, at one minute. You are one at that moment. Amen. At that time. Uh, incarnation, it, not a Bible word, but it, it is a theological term. But incarnation, break that down, incarnation. By the way, there is... There are words that are that will be changed in morphology, but you know the basic word of that is carne. It's flesh. So you're looking, oh, it's about the flesh. Then Asian is the action of. Then in means inside. Therefore, the act of being in the flesh. So the same imputation. Ano yung pinaka basic word ng imputation? Basic word, put. When you impute, amen, you put something on someone's account, right? So the act of putting on. So you see, I put on imputation. You, you, you could get that. Oh, I, I got the righteousness of Christ by imputation. Justified. Just if I forgiveness for, then you see the word give. The, all, ang point ko lang of showing that is just understand anong meaning ng prefix and suffix and most especially on the basic, then you can at least get the basic Definition, then a word adoption, add, then up. Dalawa po, add option. Add up. Right. Add option. By the way, ang adoption, do you understand how, how adoption is? Adoption is adding someone at your own choice. That is add option. Okay? When you adopt because you desire, you choose to adapt, add up. Okay, it's or to add or up option where we get. So anyway, that is just simply to demonstrate the same true on how you look at this word, the same true on how you look at the word inspiration. On how you we basically define these words by looking at it, by looking at its morphology, how words are formed, the same true to look at this word. Break that down, inspiration, then you have the word in, then the spear, then the Asian. When you learn this thing, you don't need Greek. You don't need Strong's. You don't need whatever, ano po mga kapatid, lexicons. Then you, you've got, you have the prefix, you have the root word, and you have the suffix. And when you see the word spear, what do you have in mind? Spirit. Amen. And inspiration has something to do really with the Spirit. Amen. So when you get that meaning, then look at that. If this is inside, the prefix means inside, and the root word is, the basic word is the Spirit, then the suffix is the action of. So looking at that without even uh, having some words na define idagdag mo, Ang common na mga tao, just like you and me, could now determine. Amen. That word. Now, you don't need to be scholarly. You, need, you don't need to be a graduate of this and a graduate of that. But that is how God designed the English language. Amen. Now, with that po mga kabatid, putting the morphology together with the the ano po mga kapatid, etymology inspiration then carries the following ideas ito yung mga ideas natin taking out of that number 1 it described the action of the spirit in or inside because the act the action of the spirit in inside depending on the object of inspiration okay depending on the object in if it's if it's inspiration of man in man if it's inspiration of the spirit in the scripture. Nakuha po natin? But the, just, we're just carrying the, the word inspiration. Next, the spirit acting in or inside. Ito yung mga ideas na makuha natin. We're not saying this is the very fixed definition. We're just getting it by the principle that I taught you. Next, in medicine, inspiration is breathe in, inhale. Expiration is breathe out. Right. 
So, yung tinuturo ngayon, you will have now understanding, yung natutunan natin traditionally with regards to inspiration, it is focused on the breathing out. That's why people will say, oh, there's no more inspiration because there, one time only God breathed. Because their focus is on the process of the God breathing out. But the focus of inspiration, no, that, but the breath of God is in the scripture. That is inspiration. Amen. Amen. Now, with that, we have now an idea. Next, in reference to the scripture, when we say inspiration, the spirit or breath that actively abiding and operating in the scripture. When we say inspired, ang word na yan, we mean that there is the spirit of God abiding and operating in the word of God. Now, take note, if you say, I don't believe that the Bible is inspired up to now, you are simply saying there's no word of God. I, there is no spirit of God in it. That's why napakahirap, okay, it's very hard sa isang tao na magsasabi or mag-accuse, no, that's not inspired. Okay? Because baka hindi niya alam yung mga nag-position, ah, naniwala ako na preserved pero hindi inspired. There, there are good men also. Pero baka hindi nila na-realize Gano ka importante ang inspiration? Okay? Next. Po mga kapatid. Or could be accurately refers as God's breath rather than God breathe. Yun kasi. Si Strong's kasi ang naglagay ng past tense eh. He said it, God breathe. Okay? I'll, 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 ano po? Or more accurate to say that there is the breath of God in it rather than God breathe because God breathe is a finished transaction. The action is being done. So, rightfully so, what would be the natural learning? So, simply put, if that is so, only the original is inspired. Right. Not the King James. Kasi because the action is done. Amen. Amen. By the way, the Bible did not even say, all scripture is inspired. Amen. Then, it's done. Hello. But it's given by inspiration. So, ibig sabihin, God is still giving inspiration today. It didn't stop. Or, all scripture was given. No, it's done. We don't have any argument. Amen. Pero hindi eh. Next. Or it could also carry the idea of having the breath of God. Okay? When we say inspiration, having the breath of God. So therefore, inspiration carries the active sense. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. So, why? Why the inspiration carries the active sense or the action of the action of the spirit po mga kapatid or active sense of the spirit acting in the scripture. Why? Because the subject scripture is passive. So, where is the action then? It is the action of the spirit. Mga kapatid, that is in inspiration po mga kapatid na makikita po natin. So, so sino what is now the object of inspiration? is the scripture. Okay? So with that po, mga kapatid, now, I gave you in a linguistic way, but let's look at the word of God. By the way, before that, the god breathed deception. Okay? Just to let you know, ito po, believers are made to believe that the Greek word theopneustos, indeed, it's a theopneustos. The word for inspiration is theopneustos. Okay? But it is defined as God breathe. Ito ang past tense sa breathe. Iba yung breath sa breathe. Okay? But that will lead us to believe that only the original autograph is inspired and no copies and translation could be inspired because it's a done deal. Right. Because it's a done deal. Now, ito yung problema. The one who invented this me meaning is the Strong's lexicon of the Greek-English lexicon. Bible teachers get the definition because before 
especially in the movement of the lexicon. By the way, the movement of the lexical um, studies started in around 1850s before the Westcott and Hort. Okay? Then it was, it was popularized when, when the revised version in 1881 was released. Because the, the, before Strong, James Strong wrote the Strong's Concordance, he first wrote, okay, he first wrote the Greek English lexicon that is to aid their translation of the revised version. Maybe we don't know that James Strong is one of the translators' committee of the revised version. That was needed because they get it from the Westcott and Hort. They've got to have definition of each one of them. And when he released that word, okay, every Greek word was written and there is a prescribed meaning and the word Theopneustus was there and it was, it, 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 they put a meaning means God breathed. Then from that time onward, it is God breathed and God breathed and God breathed and God breathed and God breathed. Because that was designed by the devil so that the people will only believe on a mythical original the, to be the inspired word of God and there will be no more copies and translation so that the, uh, there could be no authority or inspired word of God that the, the word that must be coming from the mouth of God. That was the design of the devil. That was the trick there. That's why we have a hard time. Now, when Dr. Rachman, okay, when Dr. Rachman have sounded the trumpet, then the issues are right. The issues are right because nobody talk about the inspiration of the King James. Nobody talks about that. Then everyone alerts their mind. No, no. Sabi ng Jablo, maybe, oh, I, I, I have stopped that during the 1800 and the 1900, earlier 1900. What's going on? Why there's issue now? Then, but the problem then, we use Strong's. That's the problem. The, the, the intention is so right. The, the sincerity was there. The conviction was there. But the, the infiltration of the devil was also there. Hello? So, Strong's is a Unitarian. Okay? He's a friend to Westcott and Hort. He is the translator committee of the Revised Version and the American Standard Version in 1901, 10 years later. Oh no, 20 years later, 1881, then 1901. That's why they have the ASV. And now, uh, he don't believe that Jesus Christ is God. That's why they made a comment on that, that oh, he's just he should not be worshipped. They have a footnote on their revised version. And that is behind why modern versions from starting from revised version all the way from 18... By the way, 1801, that is the first modern version. But before it happened that they will release the revised version in 1881, Crown Copyright will change the name of the authorized version. Why? Crown copyright should change the name of the authorized version. Why? Because people will question, oh, this is not authorized version. This is just a revised version. So, very, very ano, subtle, the infiltration was this. Okay, let's change its name. The King James Version. It was not called the King James Version, the KJV. It was used as the AV from 1611 all the way to 1800. Hello? Then they change it slowly by slowly because that's to prepare the way for the revised version. That's why if you have your Bible with you, nakasulat, the King James Version, commonly known as the authorized version. Bakit may nakalagay commonly known as? For 300 years, it is the authorized version. Sometimes I don't even, from, I, I, I'm not even, ano po mga kapatid, I'm not even, sometimes I'm not even comfortable to use KJV. KJV, 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 advocates, KJV. And, no, I'm not saying it's wrong. But what I'm saying is, since I know the reason behind of that move, kasi they cannot sell. People will question them. People will, 
this because the same copyright the same thing that that printed the King James Bible the same printing press is also the that printed the revised version and you know their aim is just to sell amen you see because there is money in publishing and that's the reason so siya yung behind jan and you know there are so many uh, you can read the biography written by Gail Ripplinger of of ano of of uh, tawag nito si James Strong and other other thing po mga kapatid okay you may they have full details on that but those are just they are not trinitarian they are unitarian they don't believe that Christ is God by the way question do you trust a translators like that I don't by the way ang atin pong mga translators they are all trinitarians amen praise God Anyway, because of that. Now, so, by the way, dito po, sa Theopneustus, now, we are not expert, I'm no expert in Greek. I-dictionary na lang natin. Or i-google out mo, you could get this. That is also a complex word. When I say a complex word, it is not just a basic word. It is a compounded word. There is a prefix, there is a suffix, there is the base word. So, it's a complex word, not a basic word. Dalawang klase lang naman ng word eh. Basic, Complex. So, pag complex, compounded. Pag basic, yun lang. So, it is a complex Greek word. And it is divided into, like in a morphology, it is formed into theo, which is the word for God. We have the neos, it's the word for pneuma or commonly for the spirit. Then, we have the tos, which is, this is a suffix in ancient Greek, indicates be describing something which is being done. Oh, what a blessing. Being done. That means the action of. Amen. So that is to say po mga kabatid, it is used to describe verbal adjective. That is when you put them together, God, spirit, action. God, spirit, action. So ang point mga kabatid, it's nothing to do with breathe. Hello? But it's something to do with breath or the spirit. Not breed. Magkaiba yun eh. Ganun ka-critical ang word, di ba? Ganun ka-critical ang grammar. So, even in that po mga kabatid, even the Greek word they have used to support our English definition, inspiration, it supports really the inspiration and definition natin, even if it's, right, if it's rightly studied po mga kabatid. So, that's the thing. So, now, let me show you some principle. We are right on time. I am glad that, salamat pastor na talagang malaking tulong. Knowing na if I teach three hours, hindi ko matatapos ang inspiration. Pero we are right on time. We're still on the definition. But praise God. Amen. Now, I still have preservation and translation. Now. That's really our problem. But the goal is the inspiration. Then everything will ma ma okay na yun lahat. Next. Dito po. Let's look at then. Ito na po. Inspiration then makes the scripture divine in origin, divine in nature. It is living life-giving, and life-changing word. And we will qualify that. Without inspiration, it cannot be God's word. Without inspiration, it cannot be alive. Without inspiration, it cannot impart life. Without inspiration, it cannot change life. That is the, the, the principle that I'd like to show you this morning. Okay, let's, let's start. The word is divine in origin. The word is divine in origin. So the word of God or the Bible is divine in origin. Be when we say this is inspired, we mean it coming, it comes from the mouth of God. Okay? Now, Matthew 4:4 4, 4, very familiar, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word coming from where? From the mouth of God. That proceeded from out of the mouth of God. When we say this is inspired, we mean this is coming from the mouth of God, not coming from the translators. These words are coming from the mouth of God. But Pastor Randy, gagamitin ulit kita kasi I, I demonstrated it this way. Si Brother John is into music. Before music po mga kapatid, sa mga bata, there is what we call phonology. Studies on sounds, how you should pronounce. There's the bursting. That's why in phonology or in phonetics, we are teaching. Because I'm teaching my... I taught my, my son to read, actually. 
Amen. My wife just assist me on that, but I was the very one, first one who taught him to read. So I, mayroon kaming manual on how to teach kids for reading. Then the pronunciation A has A, ah. Ano pa ba yun, Sister Vanessa? Ah. Okay. So, uh, A, letter A has at least five uh, pronunciation. We only learn A, I, I, U, U, Ba, B, 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 B. Remember when you we learned when we were kaki, ki, ko, ko. Kaya pag English natin, sobra ding tigas. <laughs> Wala pa tayong ganun dati, di ba? So, but sila, of course, in an ACE something curriculum, so there was a manual I, I studied because my, my, my son is a homeschool, so walang choice kundi si, either si papa, si mama, so I have to teach them phonology. So, you know, there's the proper bursting, proper pronunciation. It's actually a control ng air. May papasok, may palabas. Okay? Sa, sa music, sa sound, uh, sa ano po, choir or anything, sa voices, phono, sa ano po, phonological system natin. Sa vocal cord from our lungs down to labas sa ating bibig. Tama? Now, when we say inspiration, we mean this comes from the mouth of God. This means this is the breath of God. Now, this is the breath of God. It is divine in origin, proceeded out of the mouth of God. Now, Pastor Randy, could you please stand just for a demonstration sake? Just like to prove something. Could you say any words, any word, whether Cebuano, whether English, whether Tagalog, any words without breathing? Because every time you say, Ganunin lang iyong bibig. Say ka ng word. Hello. You can feel the air. Te Don't breathe. You can... Hello? When we say inspired, as if God is speaking, this is His breath. You need breath so that you could form words. You need breath so that you could articulate a word. If you don't believe this is inspired, then this is not God's word. And that's how critical it is. Amen. That's what I'm saying. Kung hindi to English, Ay kung hindi to inspired, if the Hebrew is only inspired and the Greek is the only inspired, the Aramaic is the only inspired or the original is the only inspired, therefore, po mga kapatid, this is not the breath of God. Therefore, if it's not the breath of God, this is not the words of God. Amen. The Bible says, I, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made. And all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. You see, the word of the Lord by the breath of his mouth. Do you see that connection? The word of the Lord, the breath of his mouth. Because the word of God is the breath of God. Kita po natin? So, remove the breath. Then you remove the authority that this is the word of God. Amen. So, when we say inspired, it means divine in origin. It proceeded out of the mouth of God. So, I say this proceeded out of the... These are not the words of the translators. Amen. But these are the same words that proceed. It was just translated. But it is the same words that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Amen. Now, the word is life. Ang pinaka pinaka thought natin sa inspiration if there is one okay if there are three words that would associate sa word na inspiration is this number one life spirit breath take note ha huh? life spirit breath when you look at the bible they are linked together 
life, spirit, breath. So if you look at just inspiration, ang pinaka-focus niya of the word inspiration, the focus of the word inspiration is life, spirit, breath. And they are there. Okay? Now, it says here in John 6.63, look at, it is defined, okay, what is life. It is the spirit that quickeneth and the flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are what? Spirit and they are? So what is spirit? Life. Without spirit, it is dead. The body without spirit, it is dead. And what is the main focus of the word inspiration? The base word. What is the basic word? Spirit. Remove inspiration is removing the spirit and removing the life. That's it. Okay, next. Proverbs 4, 4 verse 20 and 22. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my saying, for they are what? They are life. The word says what? Life. The word says spirit, and spirit is life unto those that find them. Next. In Philippians 2.16, holding forth the word of what? Word of life. If you say this is the word of life, that it got to have breath. It got to have spirit. Amen. When you say this is the word of life. Next po mga kabatid, the living word. Or the word is living. Not only the word is divine in origin. Not only the word is life. The word is also living. Living. It means it is alive. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews 4.12, for the word of God is quick. That's the word for alive and powerful. By the way, without life, it is powerless. You know what makes it powerful? Because it is quick. Amen. Now, quick is, means being alive, having the spirit, having the breath. And if you say, for the word of God is quick and powerful, then you mean the original and not this book. No, that's the end of it. Let's go home and let's plant kamote. It's nonsense. Right. So when you say the word of God is quick and powerful, you've got to believe that this is inspired. You've got to believe that this is given by inspiration or there is inspiration in it. There is the spirit of God in it. Kasi magka-conflict po mga kabatid. So that's the point. It is the discerner because it's alive. Ano sabi ng Bible? First Peter one twenty three. By the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. You see the word word of God. What liveth, abideth. So it did not say the word of God which lived. Then it's done. But it liveth. It cannot stop. Not until the Spirit will put D. But heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the words of our God shall stand forever. So it can, there could be no D there. It, it will always live it, live it, live it, and abide it. Do you want to define inspiration and preservation in one verse? Inspiration liveth, preservation abideth. You know why we still have the word of God? Because it abideth. That's the word for preservation. And leave it is the word for inspiration. There is that word. So what is the word is both inspired and preserved. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Next, ano pang pagkasabi? Not only the word is, ano po mga kabatid, not only the word is living, the word is also life-giving and life-changing. Okay. Now, ano sabi ng Bible? Ah, nauna na tayo dyan. Psalm 1919 verse 50. For thy word hath quickened me. Observe the quickening word. Ha? Thy word hath quickened me. It is life-giving. By the way, can I say this? Only, ito po yung basic principle. Life begets life. Amen. A dead Thing cannot impart anything. Neither it can impart life. Right. So, ibig sabihin, the Word of God, this book, must have been alive so that it can impart life. 
And that's why there are numerous testimony in the Bible, like especially in Psalm, for thy word hath quickened me. Psalm 119 verse 25, quicken thou me according to thy word. Psalm 119 verse 105, quicken me, O Lord, according to thy word. And quicken me according to thy word. You see the word quickening? So the word has a quickening power. For the word of God is quick. And it can quicken. Amen. It can quicken. Kikita po natin. For the word of God is quick. It can quicken. So, if this is not inspired or given by inspiration, then it cannot do anything to you. It cannot change your life and it cannot provide regeneration. That's it. Now you are now in a dilemma. If you don't believe this to be the inspired word of God, how do you explain it then? Right. So this must be inspired. This must have the spirit of God. This must have the breath of God. This must have life. Amen. So simply lang. If you don't believe this to be inspired, you are simply saying it is dead. And, amen. And if you say this is dead, you are dead wrong also. So 1 Peter 1.23, that's why it says this is, of course, we know the context. I know there are dispensationalists here. And you know what I'm saying? I'm just getting a principle. You know, this is, Jewish in, 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 in its nature, and this is promised to the Jewish people. They have they are born, by the way, being born again was promised to them in John chap. Anyway, meron naman tayong rightly dividing. So okay, I'm just trying to get ahead with those right divider mind. Okay, by the grace of God, we we do rightly divide, and we know what we mean. But what I'm saying is, look at the principle. The being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God. Why? Why it can cause someone to be born again by the word of God? Because it liveth and abide. That's the principle that I'm trying to say. If the word of God, mga kapatid, if this is not given by inspiration of God, therefore, 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 it cannot regenerate, it cannot provide life to someone. That's what I'm saying. Now, next, Psalm, 190, uh, 90, uh, Psalm 19 verse 7, we're familiar, the law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. Do you know many lives had been converted and been saved under the preaching of this book? Do you know? Do you know? I'll say that. Do you know of it, many lives had been converted, had been saved, had been changed under the preaching of this book. If you don't know, I'm one of them. I know you are one of them. All of us are one of them. Right. So this book must be something. It is not just a mere translation. Amen. It's not just a preserved, dead, outdated book. It must be living because it can impart life and it is life-changing. That's we, what we mean with inspiration. Amen. So the focus, I'd like you to get this, the focus of inspiration is not the act of God. That is what Strong's wanting us to know. It is, the focus is on the act. But the focus of inspiration is what? The, on the life that actively abiding and operating in the scripture. That is the focus. But if you remove the actual focus of that, then you will, you will be uh, shift, shifted to other thinking. Po, mga kapatid. So the nature of inspiration resides ito yung gusto ko in the words and precepts and not in paper and ink. Okay? So oh don't do this to your bible because it's holy it's no 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 it's in the words. You can burn this if you want please don't no. But amen you could not lose the word of God because it's the word. Do you see? Inspiration is not the ink on paper. 
It is on the Word. Every word is pure. Remember? Every word of God is pure. Because why it's pure? Because every word is the breath of God. That's why my challenge kanina, speak any word without breathing. Because every word that is proceeded out of the mouth of God, it is the breath of God. So with that, the focus is in the words. Inspiration resides in the words. That's why po mga kapatid, it is not, it is, translation is not a barrier. That's why we could say that this is, this is still inspired or given by inspiration. Why? Because the focus of inspiration is not on language. It can reside in any language because it's the word is inspired. Amen. It is in the word. That's why we could have confidence in English that this is the same spirit of God that dwells doing so regional is the same spirit of God is we have because uh, language but, but um, get this get this get this okay I, I'll, I'll, I'd like to illustrate it this way do you know the incarnation right God is spirit right but God is invisible right no man had seen God at any time but we've seen God in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ why because he's God manifest in the flesh in him in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily so there was a casing a physical thing na makikita po natin. Tama? And but God is in the body. Manifest in the flesh. It's in the flesh. Right. Now, the same true, okay, with inspiration. The inspiration, okay, is the spirit. Okay? It's the life. Translation is the body. Therefore, this life can manifest in a body, this time in English. There used to be a time in Hebrew and in Greek. Amen. But there are dead language now. Language, I'm talking about dead language. There used to be a time that the, the, it's in Latin, it's in French, it's in, in, in German, it is in, in, in Spanish, in English. Amen. There's a time Latin. So, it is not limited. Do you think? Do you believe that God can, when when in, when the English language will become outdated and no longer used, do you do you believe that God can transfer this to it? Yes. That's why it cannot die. Language may die, but the inspiration cannot die. Do you get the principle? Now, this this will define. Also, I'll I'll get ahead of you. What about the modern version? Now, the modern version, you cannot say it is the Word of God. Amen. You cannot say it is the inspired Word of God. You cannot say that. But it somehow contains a little. Any word that is consistent to the truth, it contains. That's why there are people still got saved using the modern version. But you know the infection. You know the, the, the pollution. You know the corruptions. We know that. Amen. Amen. That's why when you preach the word of God in English, they cannot understand. You translate it verbally, then they did understand. Amen. Unless your translation is faithful, amen, you are corrupting the word of God. All right. But you've got to be very careful. But that exact, same exact equivalent word should be given. Intended po mga kapatid. Many people... I know of many b b brethren there sa north, sa Luzon po mga kapatid, that they are really, they're against me, against ano, they thought that na I'm not really a pure King James guy and this and that because, because I thought on the translation of the scripture. And they say, oh, the, the, the King James cannot be translated. And Evangelist Bobby ay kasalanan yan. Kasi siya yung isa sa mga nagsulat ng reasons why the King James should not be translated. Ah. But listen very carefully. When I confronted one preacher and said, no, it cannot be translated right before it. So you mean to tell me, in your pulpit, you speak purely English. 
and the King James Bible word. Oh, of course, I have to translate. Now, I told him I would rather have a copy of a translation that is been scrutinized and checked by people, amen, that I can read and can base upon than me, not a Tagalog. By the way, not, I'm not a Tagalog. I'm very poor in Tagalog up to now, although nearly 20 years na po sa Luzon, pero very poor pa rin. But ang point ko lang, kung ako as Cebuano would just translate it Tagalog, I might have more corruptions than something that is being checked and edited. A copy, a scripture that is checked and edited. Right? Kuha niyo po. So that's why you could write tracks verse in Tagalog. And you know, it is inspired if it is consistent with the words of the King James Bible. It is not inspired if it's not consistent. Because inspiration is not in language. Inspiration is in words. Nakuha po natin. Now, I would. Now, one of these days, kasi hindi naman talaga, hindi natin mapilit that we all know English. But by the way, I don't need a translation by the grace of God. On my personal study, on my preaching, and on, on, on anything by God's grace. For me, this is enough. This is the word of God, sufficient. I don't need. But there are Filipinos and people na kailangan nating ma-reach out that they know zero or they know, they know zero English whatsoever. And if you've been into mga tribes, if you've been sa mga mountains, sa talagang walay. How do you bridge the gap? Bu mga kabadet then have a language, uh, I have a translation na faithful para sa kanila. It would take time if you teach them English. Kung wala. But at this moment, I'll say this, I'll say this, brethren. At this moment, I don't have any recommendable any of the languages I have not read. I have not read anything of the you know, Tagalog. I've seen some problems. I cannot say it is the, I cannot say it is the accurate translation from the King James Bible. Uh, wala pa akong masasabi. But what I'm saying is, hindi ba pwede? Pwede. Kaya lang, walang pumasa. It should be, if you want to, Missionary Anton, one of the gifts of Missionary Anton is translation. Sa Tagalog. I, I could say that's one of his gifts. But when he released even, when he released even that translation, Genesis 1-1 pa lang, I already corrected you. That's how hard it is. Paano mo? Paano mo translate In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. Paano mo nga na-translate? Then I've, I've seen, pinuna ko yung area na yun. Paano nga yan? Sa pasimula ay nilikha ng Diyos ang langit at lupa. Oh, sa pasimula ay nilikha ng Diyos ang langit at lupa. It seems accurate, right? But if you study doctrine, if you study carefully, no, it's not. It, it, it will not pass. So, paano mangyayari yun? If we have to pass it to other faithful men. To check it, what do you think? Then until it's agreed. That's how the King James translators did it. They check on each other, right? I think may include siguro yan mamaya. Mamaya sa, mayroon tayo, marami. Oh, don't worry. Lahat tayo King James today. Okay, don't worry. I am just dealing on a very important principle ngayong, ngayong, umag, ay, ngayong umaga na ito. Patapos na ako, malapit na. But how do we correct it? In the beginning, God. So, in the beginning, sa panimula, or sa simula, sa simula, ang Diyos. Hindi, sa pasimula, nilikha ng Diyos ang langit at lupa. Wrong. Because that would tell you the eternity of matter, right? Bo, in, in, before anything else, God was there. So it should be in the beginning, God. Hindi po in the beginning, okay, uh, okay, tama yun. In the beginning, God, sa simula, ang Diyos naglikha ng langit at lupa. Naglikha because created. Now, I'm not a Tagalog, but nakita ko lang yun. I'm, I don't have any gift of translation. Nalik, nakita ko lang yun. Pero pag ma-check natin, mayroong ganun, do you think kung if we will really focus on a project, we could come out? I'm not saying it's impossible. You have the Spirit of God. You are also inspired if you are saved because you have the Spirit of God in you. Amen. God could use that gift. Then 
You see, we could even produce ang ganun po mga kabatid. At least it's better kaysa wala. Now, ang final authority should this. I don't believe that you should translate coming from the Greek, coming from the Hebrew, coming from other language. It should be this. I'll explain if we have time later on. Po mga kapatid, about that. Wala na dapat iba. Hindi ko tatanggapin. May nagsasabi dun, ang kanilang translation daw galing sa Greek textus receptus. Amen. They never know that even the ano po mga kapatid, Scribners wrote, okay, Scribners wrote a Greek text in 1625. Do you know where he based? From the 1611. <laughs> so, kung ang Greek nga nag, 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 nag base sa, sa 1611, eh, bakit ko babalik doon? So, that should be the, mamaya, there are testimonies in the time of, in the time of ano, in the time of, tawag nito, in the time of uh, Winston Churchill, he said this before the World War II, he said this, po mga kapatid, that this book had been translated, the King James, had been translated in 700 tongues. That's what before World War II. I wonder. So you see, this had been the final authority. Itong book na ito, hindi yung Greek. Hindi yung Hebrew. Praise the Lord. Hindi ko alam kung bakit tayo pumunta doon at naubos ang ating oras dahil doon. Okay? Please understand. Ito yung dilemma ng, ng, ng teacher. Okay? Now, the nature of inspiration resides in the words, precept, not in paper and ink. So, ito po si Arthur Pink. I, I don't agree. Min, many, many, many. Okay? Teachings. But he made this quote and I give him credit for that. Sabi niya, the breath is both the means and evidence of life. For as soon as a person ceases to breathe, he is dead. The word of God then is vitalized by the very life of God. Therefore, it is a living book. And that is what I'm pointing. And the, the, the one that is responsible that it is living and alive is inspiration. That's why ang connection natin kanina sa first chord, there are three that bear witness on earth. The spirit, inspiration. Okay? It's connected to inspiration. Uh, Dr. Rachman also said this. Why? Sabi niya, if there is one thing a man can learn from studying the King James Bible, it is that it has the breath of God on it. In a way that no other book on earth has. Okay? So... With that po mga kabatid, let's go to the scriptural principle of inspiration quickly. Number one, ano na? Princip then we'll get the principle then. What do we get about inspiration then? These are the principles. Number one, inspiration makes scriptures living and abiding. Without it, it is dead. Amen. And unprofitable. Amen. Next po mga kabatid, inspiration makes the scripture to be the very words of God. It proceeded out of the mouth of God. That is what I'm trying to say. We just put this together. Inspiration makes the scripture spiritual. Without inspiration, this is just carnal. This is just flesh and blood. Ano sabi ng Bible? It is the spirit, John 6, 63, that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth, take note, nothing. But the words, but the words that I speak unto you, they are not flesh. They are spirit and they are life. You know why it profit life? Because they are not flesh and blood. Nakita niyo po? It is the spirit that quickened the flesh. The flesh profited nothing. So ibig sabihin, if this is not inspired, it profited nothing. You know why this is inspired? Because it is profitable. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is and is profitable. So if this is the work of flesh, it profiteth nothing. Do you see what the verse says? Why it is profitable? Because this is not made of flesh and blood. So you see that? Do you still profit? Ito. Inspiration refers to scripture and not man. I show you the inspiration of man. It is, it is not, you know, the, the, ins the scripture is inspired, men were moved. This is a different thing. I'll explain as we go on later on. Okay? 
So, ibiglas, ah, sige, hindi ko unahan. Next, inspiration refers to all scripture. When we say refers to all scripture, po mga kapatid, we don't mean that just Genesis to Revelation, but we mean anything that is in the Bible that is called scripture. They are all given by inspiration. Could you say this is scripture? If you say this is scripture, the Bible says all scripture is given by inspiration of God. We also mean then that from the very first verse to the last verse, each word has life and breath of God. Amen. Next. Inspiration makes the scripture effectual. Do you remember 1 Thessalonians 2, verse number 3, 13? As ye have received the word, not as the words of men, but as the word of God, which effectually worketh in you that believe. So, ibig sabihin, it will never be effectual if it's just the words of men. This word would never be effectual if it's just the words of men. You know why this is effectual to your life? Because it is the Word of God. If you believe it. Now, inspiration makes all Scripture profitable. Inspiration makes all Scripture profitable. That's why it says, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable. The ibig sabin, without inspiration, it can never be profitable. Because it's just a mere flesh and blood. It's just a mere flesh and blood. You know why it's profitable? Do you... Do you is it profitable to you? Amen. So therefore, this must be inspired. Amen. In doctrine, for reproof, correction, instruction, in whatever ano po area. Then, with that po mga kapatid, those are the principles that I'm trying to imply. We have discussed that to the many verses that we have opened, and these are the principles that I'm trying to imply. Now, I'll end with this part. Kasi mamayang afternoon, Po mga kapatid, I'll have an, an one hour. I'll deal on the the seven irrefutable proofs why the King James Bible is inspired. Okay? So, titingnan po natin mamaya yan. By look, without going to the Greek, but by its language in itself. Now, let's go to this. Dito tayo nagkakamali. Inspiration in perspective. Dito po tayo. Dito po ang nagiging problema, and I'd like you to see this part here. And this is a good closing thoughts para po sa atin po mga kapatid ngayong umaga. Now, this is how we learn sa atin pong bibliology when we were still studying. Maybe some of you nag-aaral ng Bible school. I don't have really a formal Bible school. Uh, I am a correspondence uh, student. So parang sulat-sulat lang, pakinig-pakinig ng tapes, hindi pa tamang doktrina. Yan po problema. <laughs> Okay, so with that, ang tinuturo, ang natutunan ko, at as I know sa mga Bible school curriculum also, their order, this is how we got the Word of God. Their order is revelation, inspiration, right? Then preservation. That's the typical order. Revelation, God revealed His Word, then God inspired His Word, then God preserved His Word. That is also a typical order among Bible-believing Schools. Okay? Revelation, then inspiration, preservation. Ito kasi ang reasoning behind. So, but inuna natin ang inspiration, then revelation, then preservation. But karamihan sa iba ay revelation, inspiration, preservation. That is when we learn that inspiration is God-breathed. Okay? Now, this is how... I learned and how people explained it. Okay? Pag sabi nila, God revealed His Word to Moses. Okay? Then, after Moses wrote the words of God, then God breathed into His nostrils. Then the words were alive. Do you see that? That is the ideology. That's how they explain it. Po mga kapatid. Now, where did they get that? They get that from Genesis 2.7. When God formed men out of the dust of the ground. You know that. And when God formed men out of the dust of the ground, then He breathed into His nostrils the breath of life. Then man became a living soul. Now, the verse is true. 
And that's what happened to man. But when you study inspiration and you will get the principle of out of Genesis 2, 7 of what inspiration is, then you will commit a serious mistake. Number one, the, spirit, the scripture or the, the word of God is not man. Amen. It cannot be. Because number two, the scripture was never dead. It, it is a life. It is life in itself. It was never dead. It doesn't need to be imparted life. So that was the explanation. That's why God first revealed. Then the, 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 the holy men of God were moved to write it down. Then God breathed it after. Then it is inspired. Therefore, only the original is inspired. Because yun lang ang hinipan ng Panginoon. No, it's wrong. It should be this way. Inspiration. Then God revealed His inspired word, living word. Amen to man. Then, by the way, when God, when the Holy Ghost moved the holy men of God, that's not inspiration. That is revelation. That is one of the manner of revelation. Do you remember Hebrews 1.1? 1, 1? God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. So those are one of the diverse manners. And you know what is that? Revelation. It's not the subject of inspiration. It is revelation. That's why the, the, the word of God is inspired. Men were moved. Amen. It was revealed. To, but why we cannot agree doon sa ideology that it has to be revealed, then inspired, then preserved. No, it's dead wrong. It cannot be true. For some reason, inspiration. Let's look at. Could you click that uh, hyperlink? Kung nandun ba? Pag click lang, bro. Yan. Okay. Hebrews 11.3, you know that. In Hebrews 11.3. Uh, sabi dun, through faith, we understand that the worlds were what? Framed by the word of God. Now, can I, can I say, mga kapatid, that before there was a world or heaven or anything, the Word of God is already there? When the Bible says, forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Okay, so, do you believe that before Adam, before Moses, before human writer, before anything, the Word of God is already there? Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God. Look at dito po. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made. Amen. By the words of the Lord were the heavens made. So that is to tell you that before anything else, the word of God was there. Right. Tama po ba? So therefore, hindi po ide yung ininspired. But it is the inspiration in itself. It was just revealed. Next. The Bible says, Psalm 119, verse 160, Thy word is true from the beginning. When we mean from the beginning, this is basic po mga kapatid. When the Bible says, in the beginning, God, we're not saying from Genesis, the first verse of Genesis. When the Bible says, uh, in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. What do we mean by that? When the beginning, it means in eternity. From eternity, God is there. Amen. Before anything else, God was there. When the Bible says, Thy word is true from the beginning. When we mean from the beginning, in the eternal state, before may tao, before bagong lahat, God, I, the word of God was there. Do you think if, if you believe God is eternal, before there was man, before there was heaven and earth, before there was angels, and God is in eternity, do you, do you, do you think, do you believe that He's not speaking? You believe he's, He don't have words? We believe He has. Amen. Number Psalms 119, verse 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. This is another linguistic form po, mga kabated. And this, uh, we call this fronting. This is one another linguistic device in English. Fronting. Uh, what do you mean by fronting? This is a word from the middle. Supposedly, grammatically, should be placed in the middle or at the, at the last place of the sentence, last part of the sentence, but the author has the authority to move the, ink, uh, the word in the, supposedly in the middle or in the last part of the sentence into front. And we call it fronting. 
So that's that is the prerogative of the author. Bakit? What purpose? For the purpose of focus and for the purpose of the theme. So ang pagkas lagay dito is forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Hindi sinabi lo, thy word is settled in heaven forever. So mag magkaiba na yung focus at sa ka theme. Ibig sabihin, the word of God is everlasting, right? Pero pag when the the word forever is place in front like for example do not fear sa basic grammar but the king james say fear not you see that word god comma it's not supposed to be in a proper grammar who at sundry times in diverse manners speak supposedly okay in sundry times in diverse manners god is speaking but the bible says god because of the emphasis and of the focus Pag sinabi ng Bible, forever, inuna yung forever, amen, that means He wants you to focus on the eternity or the eternal state of the Word of God. It is not just lived forever or everlasting, but it is forever. When is forever? Forever, O Lord. Thy Word is settled in heaven. The question is, when is forever? It is from eternity. Amen. It's already settled. Before there was any translation. Before there was man to write it. It has been done. It has been finished. It, the, the, God already has it. But we just receive a copy. You want to know where the original is? The real original is in heaven. It was not the autograph. Because they are just a copy of the word of God in heaven. Amen. Sabi pa ni John, I cannot contain everything. Amen. So, now, Psalm 119, verse 152. Look at, Concerning thy testimonies, I have known of old that thou hast founded them forever. When is again that forever? The word of God thou has been founded forever. When is forever? And that denotes the eternal state. So, what I'm saying is this. The word of God is eternal. So it cannot be given life because it is life in itself. It has been with God from the beginning. Are you listening? It has been with God from the beginning. But why we have the word of God right now? Because God revealed it. So the point is this. There's the inspiration. Then we receive a copy because of revelation. So it cannot be revelation, inspiration. As common bibliology. There's the word inspiration there. Then God revealed his inspired word. Now, this is the right way. When Moses wrote those words, it is not to be inspired or to be given life. Those are living words already. God doesn't need to breathe. <laughs> when God dictated His words to Moses, it is already the breath of God. It is already the life of God. It is not that God will have a separate way of breathing because the focus of their inspiration is on the process, right? That's, the, that's their main focus. That's it. When Moses wrote those things, after all have done, then God breathed it. And they used Genesis 2-7. Maling, maling. That's why we have to have the right perspective of inspiration. Thus, the time of its origin was also its inspiration. And do you know when the Word of God began? With God from eternity. Because in the beginning was the Word. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the uh, earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Amen, let there be light. There's the word. Amen, there's the word. So that was before Moses wrote it. <laughs> because wala pa si Moses doon. Pero there, God said it. So this is the right perspective. So, Magkaro, we will be in trouble if we will go with the flow of the bibliology of the Bible critic. We will not follow them. But we know kung ano ang ating ano po, uh, position to that. So this afternoon, we will be talking about this part over there. Just, just an hour and we're done with that. Okay, that's it. Thank you po. It's uh, almost 12 o'clock, ilang minutes, two minutes before 12 and we're on time. And uh, glory, glory to God. Mr. Mark.